we're going to have a look at absolute cell referencing. So this is when we need to do a basic formula. And when we put in our formula in our cell, so for example, this figure here multiplied by the 10%, if we were to fill this down, it wouldn't give us the correct answer. So what we're going to do is uh, have a look at the back end of this and study what's going on. So we'll go to formulas. And if we click on show formulas, this will allow us to study the back end of what's going on with that formula. So for example, here we can see it's picking up this value multiplying it by the 10%. So that's all perfect. But when we get to the next number down, the F4 there is relating to an empty cell. We need it to pick up F3. So if we look all the way down, you'll see that the column reference F is locked all the way down. So that's not a problem. But that number four needs to be changed to a three. So if you ever find yourself changing that to three, that one's fixed and you go, oh, the next one, that's not right. If I was to change that to a three, yep, that's fixed. Now, if you do that three, four times, you have realized that you are making the row reference constant. So in order to make that row reference constant, we will put a dollar sign in front of the number three. Now, in order to do that, we can press F4. And if that doesn't work for you, hold down the function key and then press F4. Now, the dollar sign initially is being placed in front of the column and the row, but we've already discussed there's no need to lock the column because the column is already staying the same all the way down. So let's press F4 again. The dollar sign is in front of the three, which is now going to lock the three. Now, if you accidentally press F4 again, it will cycle and it will want to lock the column. Let's do it again and it turns off. So we need to press F4 until there's a dollar sign in front of the three. Then we can grab the fill handle, double click or drag. And it has now locked or made consistent the row reference. Now, that's not the only scenario. We don't just fill going down. Sometimes we need to fill also going across. Let's go back to formulas show formulas. This will hide the back end and show us what the dollar figures actually are. All right, let's take a look at that here. So to recap on what we've just done, equals, and if I refer to this cell here, if I was to fill my formulas, my functions going down, because I'm going down, the only thing that's changing is the row. No matter where I am, I want to keep referring to that item there. That means that the row needs to be the same or locked. So the dollar sign needs to be only in front of the row reference, the number. Now, what if I was to perform a formula or function and then fill that formula or function going across? Now that I'm going across, the row reference is the same every time. It's still a number one, but it's the column that now keeps getting changed. So if we were to now lock the column, in other words, put the dollar sign in front of the letter, when I move across, the column is now locked. Last one. Sometimes I refer to a formula, function, and I will fill that formula or function across, but I may also then fill it going down. Doesn't matter where I go, I need to make sure it always picks up that value there or at that range of cells. So in this case, we need to have the dollar sign in front of the column so that when I go across, the column stays fixed. And for when I go down, we need to make sure it refers to that same row. So in that instance, it's locking both. Thank you for watching. 
subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks. We also have AZ Solutions and Leah Pisani. I also have available virtual training sessions. So get in touch, have a look at the description. See you next time.